Hi, everyone. It's a, a great pleasure for me to welcome you on the next uh, episode of the PFC Public Consultation Webinars. Today, we're we'll talking about Sweden. My name is Hubert Inhäuser. I'm a technical officer at PFC International, and it's my pleasure to be your host today. Our uh, schedule for today is the same as for the rest, uh, or the usually what we have for these webinars. First, I'm going to have a short uh, introduction about PFC International in general and give you a little bit of information about the Swedish forest certification system. But our main speaker today is uh, Christina Langren, who is the head of PFC Sweden. And uh, she is here with uh, us today to give us all the details about not only the forest certification system in Sweden, but also to uh, share the details about the uh, Swedish forest reconstruct in general. Now with this short webinar introduction, let's go for PFC International. For those who doesn't know, the acronym stands for Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification Systems. We are an alliance of independent national forest certification systems under the umbrella of PFC International. All of these national forest certification systems are based on PFC's sustainability benchmark standards or international standards like chain of custody. This is an absolutely voluntary mechanism promoting sustainable forest management through independent third party certification. And last but not least, we are very glad uh, for all the stakeholder support that we are the world largest forest certification system and provider of three quarters of the world's certified and sustainably managed timber. Here you can see your global coverage. Here I just would like to underline that those uh, uh, countries where you see dark green, these are the ones where we have uh, endorsed PFC systems. And those where you see the lighter green color, those are uh, members within the PFC Alliance, but currently they do not have uh, uh, endorsed uh, systems as of today. And just a bit of a teaser for the Swedish forest certification system. The system was submitted very recently in January uh, this year for assessment. This assessment is going to reveal whether or not uh, the Swedish forest certification is compliant with the PFC requirements. And for that, we have an independent uh, assessor yet to be appointed who will carry out this work. Part of the assessment process uh, we opened just today a 60 days public consultation period for all the international stakeholders. Uh, since we opened it today, and today it's uh, 27th of February, the 60 days is going to expire on the 27th of April. So I would kindly ask everyone who has an interest, take a look at the complete system documentation, which is available on our website, and uh, you can submit your comment uh, latest by 27th of April. Uh, kindly note that all of these comments submitted during this consultation will be considered by the assessor in the assessment report. And I think uh, I don't take much of your time from Christina. Uh, welcome, Christina. Uh, I would kindly ask you to uh, start uh, sharing your screen and guide us through the Swedish forestry system and the Swedish forest certification system, more importantly. Thank you, Hubert. Uh, I will just share my screen shortly. Um, bear with me. So, now I think I'm sharing my screen. Yes, um, and I will introduce to you the fifth version of the PFC uh, national system in Sweden, hopefully. First, give you an overview of the forest and forest sector in Sweden. And then I will describe the Swedish PFC system. And then I will into and give you some highlights of our standard revision. It's impossible to go through everything in detail, but I will give you the most important topics and amendments. Um, uh, the forest in Sweden, we have a large range in latitude from the north to the south and uh, along the 
the border to Norway along the mountain regions. We have the mountain birch, which is basically shrubs not used for forestry, but then we have the large boreal and boreal nemeral zones. And in the very far south, we have a nemeral zone as well. Uh, and the species is Scot uh, Norway spruce, Scots pine, um, a bit of aspen and birch. And when we move further south, we get more like elm, ash, lime, oak and, and beech. The mechanism and the dynamics is um, heavily affected by fire. The, the boreal forest burn from time to time and create a bare and inhospitable area. And then the forest recolonizes by first the pioneer species like pine and aspen and birch. And then on suitable sites, the spruce gradually moves in. So when people have a tendency to now to put out fires, so actually a lot of species to burning under controlled form is one very important part of the PFC requirements for larger forest donors. Um, other historical uses when people has, uh, Sweden has been inhabited for 12,000 years. And of course, wood has been used for household purposes and uh, for fuel and the forests have been used for forest grazing throughout history. Uh, burning woodland to create uh, agricultural land to grow mainly rye and turnips was practiced in the in the 16th and 17th century in the hinterlands by settling forest fins and others. Uh, but that was prohibited due to the development of the mining industry and the iron works and the forest was needed to produce energy and charcoal. Uh, was the warfare industry and the shipbuilding uh, and that used up a lot of oak timber and oaks were actually declared property of the state wherever they grew at one stage. And in the 19th century, the sawmill industry and later the pulp mill industry basically uh, boomed and exploded. And in 1890, 40% of the Swedish exports were actually sawn timber. But the forests are exploited by many, but managed by no one. And that led to a land reform where a private personal ownership would ensure a more sustainable forest management. So that's why uh, around 50% of the forest land is today owned by private smallholders. The Swedish forests today comprise of 28 million hectares. Around 25% are excluded from commercial. Around four and a half million hectares, and they may not be logged. Uh, 1.3 million hectares are formally protected and another 1.8 million hectares are voluntary set-asides and the certification systems are the main drivers for to create those set-asides. The ownership structure is 50% individual smallholders, around 300,000, 38% of them are female. We have 25% private and 6% other private owners. So we have kind of a dual ownership. We have both large companies, which may be looking at a couple of millions of hectares, and we have the many smallholders with an average state of 50 hectares. Um, the forest sector uh, production of sawn goods is around 19 million cubic meters, pulp 12 million tons, print two and a half million tons, packaging tissue, etc. 6, 6 million tons and around 80% of the forest products are exported and the sector is estimated to employ around 115,000 people. So it's a very important sector both for the country, the national economy, but also for the rural sector or the rural areas and small and medium inter enterprises. A few words on legislation and forest policy. Uh, we have had a forest act since 1903 and with that came the the forest land would remain a forest. 
We have a national forest inventory since 1923. So we have 100 years today. So we have long time series data based on statistically sound principles and permanent sample plots. Uh, the current forest policy was adopted with a very broad parliamentary support in 1993. And the environmental objective and the projection objective were given equal weight. So that was a holistic sustainable forest management uh, view on forests. Uh, from the state. And there is also an expectation on the forest sector to exceed legislation levels regarding environmental concern, etc. And the emerging forest certification systems in the 90s, FSC and PFC became very important tools for the forest sector to fulfill that responsibility. Uh, in 2023 today, forests are very much in focus. A new government bill on forest was passed last year and basically the forest policy from 1993 was retained but there was also focus on ownership rights set asides and to set goals for sustainable growth uh, i will mention also that this customary right of common access which means that you can access any forest regardless of ownership and you can uh, walk freely pinch a tent for one or a couple of nights and crop and this right is very important for outdoor and recreation. Uh, SFM certification in Sweden development since the start in the 90s where F our, our sister organization FSC came from, from the company perspective and was very large from the beginning. PFC has gradually grown over the years and taken a leap every time we have a, a company joining. So, so now we have a lot also double certification going on in Sweden. based on the National Forest Inventory and, and official statistics. Um, the, for the last 100 years, the standing volume has gradually increased. Uh, and bear in mind also that is the same, the forest area has remained around the same during that time. And um, some other important aspects, which also covered by the forest certification standards, like the share of large deciduous trees, dead wood and old forests show into the PFC national system of Sweden. Um, and we acknowledge that we have uh, three main actors who are who can influence the implementation of sustainable forest management in practice. And that is the forest owner, of course, in the center of, of the system, the contractors and the procurement organizations. And the procurement organizations are the link between the sustainable forest management and the chain. Look at it more closely. Uh, the forest owner is has the overall responsibility, but since we have um, both large and small forest owners use contractors for conducting the forest operations, um, they can use only PFC certified procurement organizations and contractors and the procurement organizations um, is the ones to who has a, a instructions according to pfc certain specification <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> yes mm. and um, the forest contractor is uh, or the procurement organization, sorry, uh, trades the wood and must have a COC certificate. And the contractor is responsible for a subset of SFM requirements and including adequate wood and an, a small uh, an enterprise which does trade wood becomes a procurement organization. <coughs> And adding to the picture is the structure and the group versus individual certification. Um, forest owners, where we have the companies, they have the individual certificates and the group, the smallholders are in group certificates. Procure contractors 
predominantly small and medium enterprises in group certificates. And we have three large groups certifying contractors. So now I will move on and give you the highlights of the PFC standard revision in Sweden. Uh, the preparation started already in 2020 with a gap analysis uh, performed by the PFC Secretariat. Uh, benchmark requirements. Um, the formal start of the process was passed by the PFC board in February 2021. And the stakeholder mapping was done by the PFC Secretariat, and we set a goal to have at least two new participating organizations, preferably NGOs or ENGOs. An invitation to the <coughs> stakeholders of 2021, and additional contacts were taken with selected key organizations. And at registrations, the organizations were asked to submit focus areas uh, because we were at that point in time in the pandemic. And for all we knew, we could be looking at a complete standard revision in online meetings. It didn't really quite happen, but that what was the um, worst case scenario. Uh, information and transparency, we had the procedures and process at uh, a designated web page. And uh, we also, where you had the uh, procedures, the process, the minutes, the timetable, etc. And it's still there. So it's, and also the standards are published there. So it's possible to go in and have a look at the process in um, after. Now, uh, we had a special newsletter for the standard revision, which was published during 2021 and two. Uh, the time plan, uh, which was outlined like this, and the dates were like elaborated as we went along. But I'm very happy to say that we did keep the time plan. We planned for five working group meetings, and we had five working group meetings. Um, and some other highlights would be that we had a general consultation, 30 days in October, a draft standard was published on the web, and the 60 days on the internet in April and May 2022. We also had a hearing with the authorities to make sure that our standard proposal was in line with legislation, policies and ordinances. Um, the working group uh, formed uh, uh, um, uh, four task forces to work with different topics, structure and editorial, forestry and environment. Task force for climate, which was new for this standard revision. Uh, the working group um, had elected a board and the board's the role is basically in our process to, to monitor the process and handle complaints. And it didn't have really any, any much to do this standard revision process as there were no formal complaints and the process went on according to time. Um, we tried answering and uh, developing the collaboration with the science community. So we had science and expert seminars uh, at every working group meeting, and that was a new thing. And I would like to stress also that the universities and research organizations were invited in also to participate in the working group via the stakeholder mapping and invitations. Um, I will come back to that. Um, the participating organizations. There were forest owners, forest companies, the Episcopates Forest, the church, the union, the forest contractors, and the outdoor and recreation organizations. Uh, two new organizations took active part, and we were very happy to welcome Spilkrokan, which is women forest owners, and NUX, which are women and non-binary professionals in the forest sector. Uh, the gender balance in the working group and task forces, it were 53% 
we had three women and two men. Um, these were the topics that were, were covered by invited scientists and other experts at our working group meetings. And they mirror quite well what the, the topics, the hot topics during the revision were and where we needed more information. So we'll go through them. We had outdoor and recreation. Uh, we had the future forest management plan, which is use cover forestry. We did a bit of benchmarking with uh, and had a look at PFC in the other Nordic countries, Finland and Norway. Uh, we learned about conditions for migrant workers, carbon balance, biodiversity, and gender equality. And this was a very um, appreciated and they provided very valuable input to our pr process. So this is something that uh, participants would like to explore and uh, develop more to next. Uh, is composed by six documents. Uh, and the scope of the standard revision were these five. Um, and I will now go through the main key items and amendments. And I would do that via um, um, each thematic task force to get a bit of structure. Uh, so the first task force was the, the ones dealing with structure and editorial issues. And may I remind you of the structure of the PFC system, which looks like that. So that's what the, the, we had to deal with. And obviously the clarification of roles and responsibilities is an ongoing work for us. So a lot of effort was put into that. And there were some new requirements on communication between different types of certificate holders. but more uh, also uh, input from the participants and experiences and the spotted rooms for improvement. Um, the PFC benchmark standard now has a high level structure and a requirement for management systems. And that is not new. We have worked in the PFC Swedish system for, with management system all along, but it took quite a lot of work for this task for system requirements into the standard, but that also meant that we could remove the previous requirement we used to have on ISO 14001 for group certificates, which was there to have a high level management system, really, so, so that we, we were able to remove that. Um, the group also did some specifications on of internal audits and the revision and the developed sampling specifications for forest owners. A new option to offer work for schools and sports club to get more young people interested in the forest sector was, was included. Um, and the structure and editorial task force also did some improvement to the standard for certification bodies. Um, and we have a standard for certification bodies based on the ISA standards for management system and for product certification. And the forestry perspective regarding competence, training, audit and, auditing and certificates. Um, the group added some um, requirements on the external audits of groups that it should focus and clearly audit the group administration as that would be the most efficient way to audit groups. Um, the uh, climate was a new separate task force for climate this time, uh, partly because there were new benchmark requirement and it was also the most common topic raised by stakeholders when registering um, it was uh, considered to be a very important topic and climate and forestry covers a broad range of issues. So this ta task force actually worked on all parts of the standard to enhance and create climate positive forest management.
was that climate is now specifically raised as one of the pillars of sustainability with a with the writing that forests and forestry shall contribute to mitigate climate change the forest and forest land shall be managed so that the carbon store is secured and the carbon sink within the landscape is increasing in the long term with forest material fossil resources are replaced and there was a new chapter on climate and forestry overarching documentation with these four headlines and uh, the forest management part of the standards was gone through and the group carefully strengthened the climate aspect of existing requirements like the measures for increased production and carbon uptake, uh, forest health and focus on skidding and rutting scars. Um, efficient use of resources and climate positive practices new requirements and that is that procurement organizations shall establish goals and action plan for the reduction of climate impact and a yearly calculation of fossil carbon dioxide emissions from harvesting uh, also added was a compulsory training in efficient driving techniques for staff operating harvesters or skidders which will which shall contain the minimization of fuel consumption and minimization of soil damages harvesters and skidders in the certified forest. Um, forestry and environment task force. Um, and for those who don't know the Swedish PFC system, I would like to stress again that we are just talking about some highlights of the changes and the revision. And just to digest a few of the things that we already have in the standard, I've created this couple of seconds and then I will tell you what the task force did. Um, we have a brand new paragraph on research. Uh, research has been mentioned before but now we would like to stress that PFC should be based on, on science-based and that certificate holders should encourage research and that also includes that we uh, that exceptions can from the standard are possible for research organizations or in line with the concept of adaptive forestry where you can try out new methods but and monitor them and adapt as you go along um, a forest management plan uh, the group did a, quite a big job on rewriting the appendix for the management plan it's rewritten updated and the main driver is the, to open up for the use of new technology. And there's now a possibility with the use of new technology. And the wording is also updated to better include different silvicultural systems, which may require different parameters in the management plan. Um, choice of management system was clarified. And uh, it was stated that management systems, whichever one you use, if you have a clear felling system or a continuous cover system, they must be tried out. They must ensure long-term sustainability and be adapted to site. And also management standard requirements always apply, retention trees, deadwood, et cetera, which is sometimes forgotten. Um, retention trees, um, uh, and or oh, sorry, uh, some other summary of some other key topics that were um, discussed by the task force for uh, production and environment. Retention trees, we already have a comprehensive uh, chapter on that, uh, but it was now for special purposes, for instance, restoration of old buildings like ch churches which would the conservationists would require old uh, slow grown wood, but that should be documented in the management plan. Um, deciduous trees, it was included a new means to increase the amount of deciduous trees in the north of Sweden, where this may be challenging. So it will be an alternative compliance path, if you may, if you like. 
um, pest control method. chemically treated plant material, which was passed by PFC Sweden board in 2019. And PFC actually was the first certification in system in Sweden to completely ban chemically treated plant material. Uh, game and grazing is also a very challenging subject. And uh, it was um, uh, quite a long discussions on that. And it ended up with the uh, uh, forest owners should awareness um, among forest owners on of the long term societal objectives regarding um, grazing damages um, was important. Um, some other key topics: set asides. Uh, the PFC system in Sweden requires at least five percent of the productive forests to be set aside for conservation and or social purposes. And the priority, but still the main, uh, the fundamental uh, thing is that the highest conservation values according to an assessed and documented method should always be prioritized for set aside. Uh, but if uh, for recreation and outdoor, was upgraded to priority number two, and it was also added, included a new option to set aside under tree covered land where grazing has created valuable flora and fauna. And, um, last task force, social issues and contractors. And that's again, uh, quite a comprehensive and quite a, a wide range of issues that we cover. Uh, here and I will just briefly tell you a little bit about the key topics and the topics for discussion. Um, so there was a lot of discussions on gender equality between um, forest owners, procurement organizations and contractors, uh, insurances and working conditions uh, and all of these rendered in some minor amendments and clarifications and improvement in the standard. And last, a few words on training, because training is a very crucial part of the implementation of PFC. And the PFC standard has training requirements for all and a core competence for all staff whether you do silviculture, planning or harvesting is nature and cultural con environment conservation uh, competence. And that is including refresher courses every five years. Um, a special task force went through the chapters on competence and skills development, did some amendments and clarifications and added a refreshment course in conservation value assessment, uh, which so coming to an end, completion of the national process, the working group reached consensus on the final draft on the 6th of October 2022. Uh, the standard was approved by PF Sweden Board of Directors on the 5th of December for submission for assessment to PFC International, and it was sent in on the 24th of January. And As, as um, procedures that we did a after the completed the standard revision we sent out a survey to all participants and asked them to provide lessons learned what worked well and what should we do differently next time and also some additional tips from the chairs and the secretaries were documented and coming to an end some Acknowledgements and thanks to, of course, the chair of the working group, the chairs of the task forces. I think there were there were five working group meetings and well over a hundred task force meetings altogether. So a lot of work has gone into this this uh, standard revision, and we had extra support at the secretariat from Hans Veslin, 
and Lisa Holmgren. So we're very grateful for that extra additional resources that we could use during the process. So thank you for listening. And now we are looking forward to the next step, I suppose, the global public consultation and the international assessment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christina. Indeed, I think you summarized it perfectly and displayed how much effort and how much work did, in, uh, did go into this revision and this very complex uh, system you have in uh, Sweden. So thank you very much for that. And now uh, it's, uh, it's time for uh, clarification questions. Uh, if any of the participants would like to ask a clarification question for uh, Christina, about the Swedish uh, system, please raise your hand and uh, you can go ahead with the question. Uh, until maybe uh, the participants are thinking, I, I would have two, uh, two questions for you, Christina. One, maybe it was included, I just missed it. Uh, sorry about that if I, if I did. Uh, what is the annual uh, cubic meter output of uh, the production side of the Swedish forestry? Because with the products, with the pulp and, and so on, that's you describe but how many cubic meters you harvest a year that that would be one of my question and the second would be that if i understood right that for the forest owners for the procurement organizations and for contractors you have or three uh, standards or you have two standards without apply for these three categories that's something if you could clarify me because that's i'm not sure if i understood it because this is a very particular setup what you have in sweden for that um, uh, the annual cubic meter, I should remember that. Um, I don't think I mentioned it. It could be around, perhaps I see, see some people here in, in the audience may, may help me <laughs> with that. Uh, is it around 90 million cubic meters or something like that? Uh, it's, uh, it's annually estimated by the forest agency. So if I could, could, yeah, of course I'd say so. Up. Did he agree? <laughs> yes. Good, thank you. Uh, and the, the, the second question, Hubert, uh, would, could you repeat that, please? That was about the contract. Yes, so the... The, yes because you mentioned that the setup, the, the participation uh, of the, the various players in your system are forest owners, the, these procurement organizations, and the, the contractors. Yes. And now I just, um, because uh, the system, uh, slide was uh, on the screen but i just wanted to to clarify that for these three groups you have uh, 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 different targeted standards in your system because i saw that the sfm for the forest owners i assume and i see a, a, a standard requirement for contractors and i just wanted to clarify that for these procurement organizations you have a separate standard or they apply uh, one of these two um i would say there are um, um, the categorization of forest owners, procurement organizations and contractors is a little bit simplified. So they actually may overlap and no organize, every organization is different. So the basic principle is actually if you do some operations in a certified forest and there is a requirement in the PFC standard, you should fulfill it regardless of you're a forest owner, a contractor or a procurement organization. Um, so, so the procurement organizations would, would, would need to do that. It's a bit different. Sometimes they have their own operations. Sometimes they do not. But for what they do, they should fulfill this SFM standard, the contractor standard, and all the other requirements. And a forest owner, a big forest owner who, who may themselves conduct forest operations, have own machinery and 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 the staff, they need to fulfill also the contractor part of the standard. I'm not sure if that makes it even more complex, but we don't it have. It does, but it clarifies. It it, it really yeah. clarifies because um, I I felt in the in during the presentation that these are targeted connected to the system documentation, but in this sense, it's it's uh, it clarifies clearly and uh, even I I wouldn't say that it reduces the complexity, but on the other hand. But it, it clearly clarifies that how and, and what kind of very tough uh, requirements, conditions they need to fulfill to, to go ahead with this. So thank you very much, Christina, for clarifying. I'm just looking at the participants list. Is there any uh, 
questions, but uh, I think we got at, at least uh, support for the one of my questions for from the audience, which we are very thankful about. Uh, and if there's no any other questions, please uh, remember that the public consultation is open until 27 uh, of April, uh, along with the complete system documentation. Go take a look uh, and uh, you can find a lot of uh, useful information in this uh, webinar as well. I'm certainly going to watch it once more after we, we did this. Thank you very much, Christina, for, uh, for preparing the presentation and for being uh, here with us today. And for everybody uh, else, I wish a very nice rest of the day and see you on the next episode. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.